So what I was just going to say is we'll let it run here because, of course, those who, who show up as the, the live <laughs> faithful deserve the full. But but when it you know, when clips come out or whenever, if it gets edited out later so that we can keep the video online, just so you'll know, we have watched the trailer. So if you want to pause the show now <laughs> and then come back after you watch the trailer on whatever site will allow you and then come back and see what we say about it just so we're on the same page i figured i would try it this way uh in advance <laughs> there we go helps, there we go you know there we so go. um but yeah and and with that i will let's let's take a look at this because this is some wild and and i don't know trigger warnings of some sort politically maybe you know sensibilities. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I don't sure, know, sure. all, all the warnings all the warnings all the warnings <sighs> <laughs> yeah, what are we gonna do, man? Like, what, how do you? What are we gonna do? I, I really like sincerely. What are we gonna do? Like, how? How? How are we gonna do it? How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna break this mess? Because this is a mess. If I answer, I, I, to be perfectly honest, the the most honest answer would fully get us removed from YouTube. Uh, but what I, I, what I have always thought about, what I've always loved about uh, the, I hate to say it this way, but, but I know how it sounds, but what I've always liked about my, my work when I mix what I like, the mixtape manifesto, is that it was advocating for the Russell Maroon Schultz definition of the opposite of violence in a media context, specifically because of this and that question you just asked and it being connected to the political apparatus, which then imposes on us the, the sole solution of electoral politics. Right. So I know that didn't, that was a little bit circuitous, <laughs> but I, I, it, it, it. It's rough. It's rough. And okay, so let me make this very clear. Just, I have not yet finished watching. <laughs> sure. I'm having a really hard time getting through Shirley and it, Sadden me. It saddens me greatly because I really like Regina King, <laughs> right? And, and and normally, even though I clearly understand how much propaganda all of it is, I still like Regina King because my you know. former colleague is in the movie. I, I one of my one of my favorite work homeboys was in the movie. I did, I, and I just t tweeted at him earlier. I'll, I'll come to that when we get to the to, to the to the discussion. But my point in bringing it up now is that I, that's the pro. I get it. That's why I argue for the Vernon philosophy and why we talk about this. That that it's going to get better. We're going to see people that we know that we mm -hmm. like from afar that are mm -hmm. very talented that we appreciate it's going to be well i'm bopping my head watching the trailer the music is dope the, it looks good the sound is beautiful and the content is just disastrous it's a mess man it's a mess so it's not personal i mean we you know uh uh as we were talking off air we got people connected to these things all over the place that that it's not personal love you to death but but we we are forced the way i prefer to look at it cuz when it gets personal i got to put it this way even more so we are forced into these contradictions by the setting we're in right uh and that's what is is it's it's becoming more frustrating i admit because they're getting better at it it's it's um and if you don't pay attention, if you don't know any better, or if you are already pre politically predisposed to appreciate it, I mean, it's just beautiful. It's just, it's just you know, ninety minutes, two hours or so, or whatever of just bliss, right? And then you, and then you get Barbara. Well, you haven't. Well, I don't want to spoil it. I guess no, I you can now spoil it. it I mean, I'm, you, I'm gonna finish I mean, watching it, but it's just, it's, it's. But my point is, if hard. you love Barbara Lee, 
Right. You get a Barbara Lee biopic on the side mm. and with her closing it out in okay. real in real life, Barbara Lee closing it out. Uh, you get a good McDonald's commercial. This oh. is one brilliant, literally I mean, a McDonald's commercial. Literally a McDonald's commercial. I mean, from the start, from the, the first scene, I don't know if you even caught it. She is drinking a McDonald's yeah. drink, walking up to the steps to take yes. her first picture as a congressperson. Like, and and I watched it and I thought to myself, was that a McDonald's cup? And then there goes another McDonald's. And, and then if you thought if you were McDonald's. confused, it came right back. Exactly. Came right back. And I was like, so we just we just selling McDonald's now using Shirley my kids them. get mad at me. I've messed them up. I've successfully messed them up. They don't miss a product placement at all anymore. Good. Uh, yeah. I'm like, you gotta, you, if, if, you know, and they're like, and of hey, all things, up. McDonald's, yeah. McDonald's. Oh, which for, for a certain, particularly, I don't know how it works anymore, but for certainly my generation, McDonald's, they used to talk about proudly was the number one employer in the black community. Mm -hmm. They talked about how McDon it was it was like a it was a all those commercials about how Calvin from the hood who started oh, on fries is now a manager. Do you remember Calvin? Right, Calvin. Do you remember Calvin? I yeah, do remember Calvin. So I McDonald's do. has a really long and they did all those Dr. King comm commemorations. Yeah. yeah, and then here they are giving us Shirley. I'm like, this is crazy. It's right. crazy. So even and again from the 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 media analysis part it's it's the technology doesn't change the relationship so the new advanced capability just brings all that old stuff right here to it uh so we get we get calvin we don't need calvin we got it more more subtly and 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 beautifully provided to us in in the in the context of a, a netflix biopic i mean it's wild it's wild and i really you know <laughs> I just, I keep having these same conversations about the Democratic Party and the vote blue, vote blue no matter who, and the, well, you have to support Biden, and then it circles back to, well, it's too important to, you know, to risk third parties, and, you know, and then, you know, you look at some of these third party people singing rap songs, and you have to wonder, like, like what, what is going on? And it's this entire movie, I've gotten through the first, I think hour and 15 minutes now at this point. And if I was not a person who was, who was really clued in on how bad the duopoly is and how sunk in the Democratic Party is with the Republicans, and how they're literally two cheeks on the same ass as has been <laughs> has been stated, right? Like I would be like, oh, like she fought from within, right? The sister comes to her to find out, like, what how did what do I do? And her first question is, What are you registered to vote? You have to vote. And that's Barbara Lee. That's who becomes Barbara Lee. Well, she is Barbara Lee. That's the character. That's her. She's Barbara Lee. That's her. That's what I'm saying. You get, you get the her. Barbara oh. Lee story. You get her. You get the side biopic, and it's beautiful. I wrote it down here she, because she comes at her, and then she comes at, and of course, Barbara has the afro. Right. So she's the stereotypical panther. She comes at the or the or the black radical. She comes in there talking about uh, all the stuff we start with. The vote don't do anything. Right. It's two cheeks of the same ass or something parallel to that is what she's saying. And then what we and then what we get is the same the, the same condescension where she said uh uh Shirley says don't just be a a yeller and a screamer mm -hmm. standing outside and then and then Barbara calms down for a second and she says come and work for me and then I wrote down here she's co-opted. Mhm. Mm so I said, so as I told a friend of mine, uh, 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 I, what did I say? I, I wrote that uh, the point was, I was like, we get to see how um, Shirley stole Bar Barbara from the revolution. <laughs> That's what I wrote. <laughs>
<laughs> and that's what we see. And and so that scene, and of course, when the movie ends with Barbara Lee, who for many is the most radical political figure that they've seen, certainly in 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 mainstream politics, uh, or anywhere for for some, uh, that would be their standard bearer. Uh, with her one vote against the Iraq War or whatever, you know, like right. that was like, you know, that but but what that is becomes symbolic of, if not, it's just sort of an overt message saying, put down the radicalism and become Barbara Lee. You don't need to be Asada. You don't need to be Sophia Bakari. You don't need to be Renee. You don't need any of that. You just, you need to put all that down. Don't be a yeller and a screamer. Come on in and then have a nice career and you get to close out a biopic about Shirley uh, I mean, it was. <laughs> it was just right. remarkable. It is. It's remarkable. It really is. And and you know, I I can I have I have a book that she wrote that I have not read yet. And but I also know that I mean that's not all that there was to her, right? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like, like you picked everything that you could pick out of her life to completely nullify anything that bucked the system. Because even the things that she did to buck the system, it was all, it's all while trying to like maneuver within, right? Like, it's just, it's crazy. And, and I got show, sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just, they show it in the preview. Basically, you get what you see in that part of the preview where where she says, where they say, but you're a black and you're a woman. And she says, um, no, they no, they no, they say you're the line where they say you're going to you're you're just a politician. And she says, do I look like any other politician? Right. And that's the point. No, you don't. But you but you end up at least in this right. movie, mm -hmm. you embody all the same, you are just another politician. And right. then and then when she's done dirty, which is what the film concludes with by the Democratic Party and particularly the black men mm -hmm. within the Democratic Party, they become the villains that, that, that uh, uh, we're not left with the critique of, that's because the Democratic Party is, that's what right. it does. Right. We're left with the black men within the Democratic Party. At least that's what I took. That the, the it was it was Ron Dellums, it was Walter Fauntleroy that uh, they they abandoned you at the moment that you could have. Right. And it was almost like, well, wow, wow, the racists are gone. Like, you know, <laughs> like the white rulers of the party have disappeared because we see them at the beginning. Right. We have that one scene where the white old white congressman is standing there giving her a hard time. Right, because she's making the same amount of money as he is. Right, right. But by the end of the film, and you could look, when you finish it, I'm happy. Or if anybody wants to correct me on this, please. But by the end of the film, they're gone. They're gone. She goes to visit George Wallace. Yeah. She's, I, she's yeah. hanging with, you know. The, right. but, so the racist, but certainly the racist within the party that would have been holding her back, they're gone. And it's Dellums and Fauntleroy mm -hmm. who, and I felt the kind of way that I admitted biasly because Fauntleroy eulogized my father. Uh, so it was, it was weird to think of what that might have meant about my father's politics. I got, mm -hmm. I'm not going to front. I'm not going to mm -hmm. front. No disrespect. But I was like, <laughs> Oh no, I don't want to see Fault Leroy in this looking like this. <laughs> right. Uh so yeah, I mean, but it was it's so. crazy. And it's and it's it really is it is very well done. And if if you watch it because you're seeking to be entertained by a movie, right? And you don't understand that the price you pay for your entertainment is propaganda. That's the price you're paying. Like you're being entertained, but you can't help. You can't help while you're being entertained, but to hear all of those hidden messages 
right? So the price you pay is that you, you have to either take in those messages or you have to literally watch it and spend the whole time fighting that contradiction in your head of knowing they're trying to tell you this thing, but don't, ah, don't forget, <laughs> right? Don't forget, don't forget that, you know, when all is said and done, if you are a black person who holds to the revolutionary, you're going to end up in a box. Because that's what this, that's what happens. That's mm. the end result, right? So you can go ahead and you can, you can, you can go play revolutionary if you want to. And you can, you know, you can go and, and speak truth and try and rile the people up and make them screamers and, you know, do the whole thing. But none of those people are here anymore. And why is that? Or you can participate in the system and maybe they'll make a documentary about you. <laughs> Maybe you'll be the next one to be on Netflix with your, your life story. Maybe you'll be the next one on that Netflix screen. Right. And that's a high price to pay, right? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a high price to pay to actually have to like give, like really have to confront those contradictions as you are watching something that has been put out there as as entertainment under the guise of teaching you about a historical figure that was actually relatively important to black people, right? So it, I mean, it's, I, I was really, I'm having such a hard time. I don't even know if I can bring myself to watch the Bob Marley movie. Oh, I, well, I just, I, I don't, I don't encourage you to do that. It I don't, was, it was I don't know. And, 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 you know, my, my mother be bad. She's tried like three times to watch it and she has fallen asleep each time. And now she's just given up. She's not going to try she should anymore. Just, she should just, so it, it's, it's a good thing. She should, if, if, if we've ever encouraged going to sleep and not being woke, pun intended, that's a good time. <laughs> I just, cool. but it's all these things and it just comes at you. It is a constant barrage of these really well done, creative, all the things. And it is just laden with nothing but, but poison. So there were a couple of, speaking of that, so I noted a couple of things also that you get the what I wrote down the original version of I'm not your candidate where remember where Obama came in and said look I can't I'm not just the president of black America uh I'm the president of all America mm -hmm. and she had to do a version of that so on the one right. hand she's saying I want to be the first woman I'm happy to be the black woman who's representing all of these groups and that groups and this group and that group but when it comes to getting elected she stands up and she says on camera I'm not here for black people i'm not here for women mm -hmm. i'm here for everybody mm -hmm. and it's like okay so there we go we got the origins of that there was also the uh what was oh where is it where is it uh where is it we go oh, um oh i did the yell or the screamer we get the Oh, I thought there was another one that she did. There was another, where the part where, where I, I forgot, was it Terrence Har Howard's character or the other one um, where he says, uh, um, thank you for making us believe. Mm -hmm. That's Terrence, what that matters. was Terrence Howard. Mm -hmm. That's what matters, he said. Yep. Um, I thought there was another one of those particular phrases that I thought that they, that I saw like a, like a, uh but anyway okay okay maybe maybe i but but yeah so we get that we get the other thing real quick if i can there was something where she where, where that was really bothered by which was her engagement or disengagement with the gary uh the conference the, the 1972 mm -hmm. gary indiana black power conference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is true they mentioned this in the film and it is true because i happen to have been and i'll share it here real quick because i went and found the, a digital version of it but but in the early 2000s, I was part of an organization called Organization Organized Coup. 
and we um, uh, modeled our document, our founding document on the Gary Proclamation uh and found it very useful that yes the it was it was condemnable in terms of the lack of women being involved it was condemnable based on some of the more conservative politics that were involved but the the document that it actually produced was i think a very structurally at least a, a nice frame to uh approach various elements of the struggle so shout out to my godfather, Mr. Tom Porter, who put us in touch with Amiri Baraka, who I believe at the time was one of the few, if not the only still living members. And we sort of got his uh, blessing and then we just sort of followed their trajectory. So so, um, so I, I just wanted to bring that up to say that that the conference wasn't as useless as it seemed to be depicted in the film, although it did show, I think, interestingly, uh, her struggle with uh, the, her relationship with, with Black liberation, which right. is what we saw at least in a little bit in the preview with her meeting with Huey Newton, who right. again is is somewhat lampooned and she, they meet at Diane Carroll's house and he's just kind of looking, you know, it's really kind of, a, he's immature and radical. She's practical, mature, responsible, mm -hmm. and wins the day, so to speak. Uh, right. But, um, and then just quickly, I just want to do shout out my man, Marcellus Baseman Shepard, who, who is in a scene, you see him introducing her and uh, uh, at a convention. And, and uh, uh, you'll notice the voice, there's a very deep voice. And uh, we got to, uh, he was, you know, a colleague of mine at Morgan State. He worked at WEAA for many years. Uh, and I don't want to put this on him, but I feel like he was forced <laughs> out by the same man that forced me out as a school of communication. So it was like, we all got to kind of got forced out, you know, but uh good brother. And it was good to see him pop up in that, in, in, in that role. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, oh yeah, I, I made a note that Terrence Howard's character was that he got the most angry and ready to fight when when in defense of the white boy, which I thought was right. <laughs> I said, so now you ready to swing on somebody because the little uh, white kid is upset. He's in a, he's he's getting attacked or whatever. Oh, uh, I just um, and yeah. so yeah, I mean, you caught a lot of the things that I've noted, and so I. Uh, warning to to all the, the oh all that's what it was oh. i'm sorry i'm no, sorry go, go, go. i found it that it was in my walter Faulkneroy note that because I, I got stuck on that he eulogized my father but he's in the film he's used to to offer us so we like i said we got the i'm not your candidate trope and then we got again from Faulkneroy the explanation of why we have to defend the lesser of two evils mm. and why in that moment nixon has to be stopped you know, mm -hmm. look at, and if you're not watching it with a certain lens, you're like, see, that's why we got to vote for Biden again, where right. I think we should be seeing it as, see, that's why we should abandon this whole thing because we're in the same cycle. 50 right. years later, they're saying right. the same shit. So, right. okay. And, right, that, yeah. and that part is important, right? Because it's, it is a, a, I mean, it really is well done. It is a well done version of, Look, even then we were we were having this struggle with the Democratic Party, and the way to do it is to get in there and fight from within. That's the way. And we're not gonna pay attention to the fact that in the end she got done dirty. <laughs> we just gonna we just gonna we gonna don't worry about all of that. Worry about all the stuff she did and how hard she fought. Message. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> it was like. I just, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, but. <laughs> and that's why they give us Barbara Lee at the end, by right, the way. It's right. like a nice because you have bookmark. To, you, yeah, right. Bookend. You have to yeah. show, like, look, 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 the, the, it continues. Right? And then who, I, who, who when, when it's Barbara Lee's movie, we'll see who she, you know, who, who the person is that she grooms to take her place. Oh, wow. Right? And oh wow, 
Right, because it's a continuation. It is, I mean, it is literally oh, wow. rinse, rinse, cycle, repeat. Like literal. And there is always someone to be uplifted, to replace, to say, see, and this person's continuing the work. So now you can go look at how 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 they're continuing the work from within the Democratic Party and 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 fighting the fight and and it's it's just to suck you in completely. Yeah. Um just I don't know how much more on this you had. There was just one more piece to this. If you and I got I no, yes, and I have I have I have something else, but go you okay, go. Okay, no, first. we can go to yours. No, I mean tell what did you want to get to? <laughs> so this I thought of diallo <laughs> oh no so often and i Not was a like diallo reference listen her relationship with religion and christianity mm. and how she had to go see him in the hospital because that's what christians do and this oh, that's whole right. i mean she was guided by God. Like You're talking this, about George Wallace. She had to go see yes, George Wallace. Yes. Segregation now, segregation for and it, right. I do, to be fair, they they at least let viewers know that a lot of black people were not happy with that. True. But then to your point, they they have their explanation. Right. And even before, I don't know if you caught this, but in her conversation with, with Barbara Lee, when she says she doesn't want to go to, to, to Gary and, and she's like, no, I'll go and I'll represent you. And she brings her into her office and she says to her like, what are you so afraid of? And she like goes to snap at her and she was like, it almost made me lose my religion. <laughs> right. And the response was, well, this is why I can't be in politics because I can't lose my religion. Right. I don't think I caught that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't catch that. Right. And so this consistent reference to religion and God and Christianity and being guided by these things that all I thought to myself was <laughs> we should have told Diallo to come on so his head could explode <laughs> while we're having this conversation. Because this is why I don't like for for all the teasing I do and oh, I just, you know, he he's so whatever with it and all my he's not wrong about how misguided black people are via religion. He's not wrong. And it was just one more, it was like one more thing that they just kept recycling and replaying throughout the movie. Like, don't forget God. Don't forget your Christianity. Don't forget to be a person of yeah, God. Wow. How did I'm, I'm I can't believe you missed that. Yeah, <laughs> I I'm, can't I'm, believe, I can't believe you didn't I, I was like, wait, this ain't on his list. It's not. It's not. I that's that's very that's deep. That's and it's and, and I'm I'm I admit it's a little spooky to me right now. I'm a little I'm a little concerned for myself <laughs> right now. <laughs> that you didn't. I'm trying to look at my notes again. Did I miss it? Did I scribble it down? No, I don't have it. Right. I did not I did not get it. Right. And so I just I was I was floored and I really I honestly, I had, I had a Diallo moment where I was like, oh, this is the problem with religion and black people. This is the problem. Oh, I hope I'm in the chat when this airs. And, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to say it tomorrow. I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to have to admit it. But it was crazy. It really was. And I was like, it's just one more thing like this, you know, you got to make sure that you're always doing the thing that's going to, you know, highlight how close you are to God. And we're not going to worry about all, all the other things. Don't worry about all the other things. All the other things. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Um, well, just to add a little bit to that madness, I'm so disappointed in myself right now. You just, <laughs> you just, you just messed up my whole... Uh, one of the things I did notice is that on the IMDb of the... or on the Wikipedia or whatever of the uh, film, you see that Participant Media is a producer of the film. So we know it comes out on Netflix. Right. But I couldn't help but... I, when I looked into this, I noticed that Participant Media is 
you get to see Al Gore. Participant mm. stands for commitment and passion for making the world a better place through experiences that fill people's minds and hearts and motivates them to be that change. Mm. And so it's talking about activism and changing the world and what participant media is an offshoot of is, whoops, is the Skoll Foundation, which is an, um, maybe, I guess, not the worst. Uh, uh, da, 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 where am I looking for here? About, no, okay, that was it. So then I got to come down here. And then you see, you know, it's the Skoll Foundation. Mm. Jeff Skoll and what, what, you know, a philanthropist, social entrepreneur, um, multi-billionaire. And uh, so really what I'm just saying is even if he, let's just say he isn't, if he isn't at the right wing of the ruling elite, uh, maybe he's on the left wing or maybe he's quote unquote, not as bad or whatever it is. The point for me is still that we're, we're having, we're relying on multi-billionaires through their philanthropy to provide us with the, with the backing and the green lighting of films that are supposed to tell us about not only just black history, just generally, but black activist history and radical history and, and right. the history of struggle and right. what changes it. So the, it's on the website where Al Gore is 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 sort of the frame of what change is and so even to your point about the the the, the do do i don't even know if i can say it correct the doop exit it's the dwop exit or whatever it is i mean we're talking about somebody who should have been president and i don't want to get us another strike by talking about a certain voting cycle <laughs> right but I mean, you know, somebody who comes, you know, this is the Clinton, this is, you know, the Clinton, Obama, Biden, Democratic National Committee, Democratic Leadership Council. This is the, this is who's giving us our history. And then to your point, and I, I'll stop, is is Regina King is great. Right. Terrence Howard was great. I thought Terrence right. Howard, you know, when he you're not talking so, about lunatic science and math and claiming you found... <laughs> new particles or whatever the hell he's talking about. He's yeah. great. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It's bad, man. Like, it's bad. And this is what we get. This is what we get. This is, this is our beacon. Like, this is, this is who you should be like. This is who you have to strive to be. And then any storyline that even comes close to trying to be about someone who was an actual revolutionary, like you get the wildest version of that person humanly possible. Like you, 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 you tell a story about Fred Hampton, but it's not really about Fred Hampton. It's actually about the FBI person <laughs> And who that's was, who's giving us this movie too, right? Right, right? like it, it's actually about the FBI person who was working against Fred Hampton. So that way we don't really have to talk about the politics of Fred Hampton. We don't have to talk about all the things that he does. We don't have to talk about his brilliance. We don't have to talk about how as a teenager he was bucking the system, right? And we also, you know, we can just gloss over that it got him, it got him unalived. Right. Don't forget that lesson, because these are your options. You can play nice in the system. Right. And you can become, you know, the, the headline and the story for for Netflix or you can attempt to break the system. But what you're going to get is you're going to be the co-star in the movie that's about you. And in the end, they're going to gloss over the fact that the reason that you are no longer here to give your voice is because the system made sure that you were removed. Wow. Yeah. And then John Ridley, who's the writer director of this gave us 12 years a slave. The, the people that gave us that film. I mean, this is, it's just a beautiful, I mean, we, yeah. It's the beautiful. alarm you're ringing is, is yeah. yeah. 
is beautifully awful. Beautifully awful. And and we really we need to we need to and and it's annoying to be that person who is always having these conversations with people. But I mean, you just have to do it, right? Like you just have to, you just have to do it. You just can't, like, you can't, like, I'm not going to have a conversation with you about this movie and pretend like it was just such a great movie. And I'm not going to bring up all the contradictions so that you can at least think for a second that, you know, the price that you paid for your entertainment was to give up all of your common sense. Mm. with regard to this system. Mm. Right? Mm. I mean, it's, it's wild. And so people have to be willing to, to annoy other people and to piss people off, right? And I do it all the time. Like, I mean, my coworkers, they, I, I, I do think they love me, but they also think I'm a nut. Because I'm always on about something, right? Like always. They bring coffee in from the wrong place and I'm like, why are you still giving them baby killers your money? <laughs> and I say it like that and they'd be like, Renee, Renee, right? But you, but really, even with my reaction, no, you, you did that. Right. Like, don't, don't Renee me. You, you supported the, the baby killers. Right. And we all live in our contradictions, right? Cause I shop at Whole Foods. I do. It's the Amazon store. I know, but I, like, I, it's hard to find a place where I'm going to get that selection of food that I feel like is healthy to eat in my house. I think, I think it's, it's on the one hand, it, it's possible to, to do better. Uh, on the other hand, I think that if we traced all of the things we buy back to its ownership, it would yeah. be very <laughs> difficult to avoid. You're going to be mad one way or another. Yeah. Somebody, but, uh, um, so yeah, I, I mean, because we're trapped. We're also simultaneously trapped in this system where in order to live, you have to come. I mean, I guess you don't have to comply with some rules like you could go live off the grid. But even that, like, I wonder how much of that is really not still <laughs> like, are you really, really free from the system? I don't know. I don't live off the grid, so I can't I can't say for certain. Right. But you're always in some ways trapped by the constraints of this system because you want to live, right? You want to eat. You don't want to sleep outside. You want to, you know, have, be able to watch movies on Netflix, right? So you have a TV, you have your phone, you have, you know, all these things. And like, I have arguments and let, let me not say arguments, but I, you know, I have discussions with people who I love very much and they're like, you know, Part of this is like, you're living the contradiction, right? You live in a house, you have a job, you have, you know, healthcare, you, you know, you have your iPhone, you you have a MacBook, like you have all these things that are all part of this system that you say you want to break, but you're still utilizing all the things that are within the system. And that's the contradiction that I have to live with. But at the same time, I feel like at the least, since I have to live with these contradictions, at the least, I can speak up about the things that are so egregious that people shouldn't just go along with it.